Good evening. My name is Uli Gräbener and I work with the Biosphere Reserves Institute of Eberswalde University for Sustainable Development. With this little presentation I will introduce to you some very essential features of UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. In the presentation you will learn what are Biosphere Reserves all about, what the fuss you can say, what functions do Biosphere Reserves have, and how does zoning work for biosphere reserves? So let's hop into it. Biosphere reserves. Let me give you some pictures to give you a feeling for what they can be. Biosphere reserves are old cultural landscapes, for example. They preserve traditional ways of using natural resources. They conserve biodiversity, including also the diversity of cultural species. They strengthen regional identity. They give people a feeling of home. They are, however, also a permanent discussion and negotiation and need, hence, the participation of all stakeholders. They are a never-ending process to raise awareness among local people, citizens and authorities. They do include remnants of wilderness. But they also feature sustainable land use, just as well. They are neither Indian reservations, as people could think, nor open-air museums. Instead, they are places of innovation for testing new approaches and for initiating necessary changes. They are altogether an integrated approach on human history, livelihoods, culture and conservation. So, some definitions. The first one you can find in the current MAP statutory framework the statutory framework of the UNESCO MAB program. Biosphere reserves are areas of terrestrial and coastal marine ecosystems, or a combination thereof, which are internationally recognized within the framework of UNESCO's program on man and the biosphere, in accordance with the present statutory framework. In brief, a biosphere reserve is what UNESCO declares a biosphere reserve. That may be a bit too simple. You also find on UNESCO's website a more sophisticated explanation or definition. Biosphere reserves are learning places for sustainable development. They are sites for testing interdisciplinary approaches to understanding and managing changes and interactions between social and ecological systems including conflict prevention and management of biodiversity. They are places that provide local solutions to global challenges. Now that was a lot of text. Let's look at it in brief. In brief, biosphere reserves are sites for understanding and managing changes and interactions between social and ecological systems. And in this way, they become learning places for sustainable development, because understanding interactions between social and ecological systems is the main prerequisite necessary for sustainable development. And by this, they become places that provide local solutions to global challenges. Biosphere reserves have been developed way before the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations were formulated. Nevertheless, from the early on, biosphere reserves were seen as an instrument to make these goals happen. So, Kofi Annan already said our biggest challenge in this new century is to take an idea that seems abstract, sustainable development, and turn it into a reality for all the world's people. Thus, the Lima Action Plan, the current plan of um, the Man and the Biosphere Program, says Biosphere Reserves 
are recognized as models contributing to the implementation of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. If you look at it, Biosphere Reserves address the three areas of sustainability. Ecological sustainability, for example, by conserving biodiversity, by supporting water retention, soil formation or carbon sequestration. Economical sustainability, by featuring agriculture, horticulture, animal husbandry, beekeeping, fishery, forestry or by providing services to tourists but also and by no means least social and cultural sustainability. They are landscapes that provide places for living, for work and places for recreation, for nature recognition and for inspiration. I also found a different definition. Look at that, you can you hear a biosphere reserve is a unique kind of protected area that differs from a national park a wilderness area, a national forest or a wild ref refuge in having three very different but equal aims. The conservation of, for example, genetic resources, species, ecosystems is one aim. Scientific research and ecosystem monitoring is the second aim. And promoting sustainable development in communities of the surrounding region is the third aim. And here they are, the three functions of a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. So let's look at that a bit more in detail. Three functions, the conservation function. Let's name that first. The intention is to contribute to the conservation of landscapes, ecosystem species and genetic variation. Clearly. The development function to foster economic and human development, which is socially and culturally and ecologically sustainable. Very important, the logistic function, to provide support for research, monitoring, education and information exchange related to local, national and global issues of conservation and development. Now we learned about three functions. Here come three zones. Biosphere reserves also feature three zones, core area, buffer zone and transition area. Again, let me make it a bit more visible to you. The core area definitely is all about nature conservation. The core area is the place of the biosphere reserve where we try to protect the ecosystem, species and all the services that the ecosystem provides. The buffer zone holds uh, also places for education, for monitoring or research that frequently surrounds the core area. And the transition area is for sustainable use of natural resources. Here you can see the most recent scheme of Biosphere Reserve Sonation. You can find it on the website of the MAB program of UNESCO. You will see in the center in green the core area, surrounded by a buffer zone and by the transition area. So this is how it frequently is. Please do note that there is not only one core area, there can be several core areas, there can also be several buffer zones. You will find human settlements mainly in the transition area and to some extent in the buffer zone. Research takes place just about everywhere in the Biosphere Reserve, with maybe a shift in focus. While in the core area, the focus is definitely on ecological principles, functioning of the ecosystem. The focus of research in the transition area might be much more sustainable development and how to make it possible. Education and training takes place mainly in the transition area and the buffer zone, just as well as tourism. From the recently newly published statutory framework of the UNESCO MAP program, I've taken this scheme. You can see in the center some more exotic animals. It probably features more also the perspective of the south. 
It is quite similar to what I just showed you. What surprises me a bit here is it looks a bit like four zones. You have the three different colors and then you have a white stripe before you have the outer border. Talking about outer border, the zoning has undergone quite a bit of evolution. If you take this scheme here, which is uh, also from UNESCO from 2002, you can see that there was a time when outer border wasn't even printed. And the feeling was that a biosphere reserve blends into the bigger landscape surrounding it and doesn't need a, a wider border, an outer border. Reality showed that if you don't have an outer border, you don't know where your learning site for sustainable development ends. And you can not, or only with difficulties, define or design projects. So if you take this in Spanish scheme from 2016, it already has a clear demarcation of the outer end of the biosphere reserve. I very much like this scheme of a biosphere reserve because it combines the zoning, which we have been talking about already now, and the functions of a biosphere reserve. You could assume three zones, three functions, each zone one function, but it's not that easy. You can see very clearly research, monitoring and education takes place just about everywhere in the biosphere reserve. The conservation function clearly is focused, but it's not reserved to the core area. You do have conservation also in the buffer zone and to an extent also in the transition area. The opposite way around, the economic use is happening a lot in the transition area, but it also happens in the buffer zone. You should say it should not happen in the core area. Now these schemes are simplified situations. In reality, biosphere reserves frequently look like this. This is the um, zonation plan of the Schorfeide Korin Biosphere Reserve, just next to Eberswalde, where I'm working. And here you can see that several core areas, many core areas, one, two, three, four, you can see all these dark dots here are surrounded by buffer zones and are embedded in the bigger landscape of the biosphere reserve. So this is how it frequently looks, um, depending also on your situation. You also have percentages of the core area, 3%, the buffer zone, 19%, and the rest, 78% transition zone. Whether the zonation is a very simple one or a very sophisticated and small scale one depends very much on your landscape. Here you have a comparison of two German biosphere reserves. The one is a forest block. The other one is a cultural landscape that uh, is structured by different height levels, but also by use and different things. So all this relates to how your zoning will look like. Let us sum up. Biosphere reserves, as we learned, are areas of terrestrial and coastal ecosystems promoting solutions to reconcile the conservation of biodiversity with its sustainable use. They serve as living laboratories, learning places for testing out and demonstrating integrated management of land, water and biodiversity. They are internationally recognized, nominated by national governments, but they remain under the sovereign jurisdiction of the states, but they are accepted by the UNESCO MAP program. They fulfill three different but equally important functions. It is important for me to stress equally important functions. They feature three distinct zones. We learned that core area, buffer zone, transition area and individual biosphere reserves as learning places for sustainable development as the global answers the, as the local answers to global questions form a world network the world network of biosphere reserves and with this 
picture from the Far East Marine Biosphere Reserve, a sunset. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.